My name is Dr. Brian Mosley. I'm one of the senior neurology residents and an assistant professor of neurology here at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Well, in 2010, the Accreditation Council for All of Graduate Medical Education put through new rules, and as part of those rules, they stated that residents in their first year of training should not work more than 16 continuous hours on call. And because of that, residencies across the country have had to adjust where they're involving a lot more night float systems. And for those to be successful, they have to have transition of care, where residents sign out to one another, usually either face-to-face -face or sometimes through written communication. And the unfortunate thing about that is that when you have handoffs of care, unless the communication is good, there is a lot of opportunity for error that can result in patient errors and potential compromised care. What we looked at was whether or not standardizing the process of sign-out would actually improve communication skills between residents. So in order to go about designing a standardized sign-out system, we first uh, sent an electronic survey to all of our neurology residents uh, years two through four here at Mayo, kind of judging their opinions about unstructured sign-out and about things that may be going well with that and things that weren't, things that weren't getting across. Once we had all of that information, we actually designed a standardized uh, system to use on our neurology services. We utilized this particular format called ASPAR that stands for Situation, Background, assessment and recommendation. It's something that actually our nursing department here has been using quite successfully for a number of years. What we then did is we piloted it over three months. Basically for the first half of each rotation we had residents utilize the unstructured sign-out system like they had before. And then at the halfway point they took a survey about their opinions of the unstructured sign-out. They were then taught by one of the study authors how to do this structured sign-out system using the SBAR format, which they were then asked to do for the remaining two or three weeks. At the conclusion of that, they took the same exact survey so that we could compare the results of the two. When we designed this new standardized sign-out system using the SBOR format, we noticed improvements in a number of variables. In fact, we noticed significant improvements in the uh, ability of residents to make sure that they were passing along information, test results, et cetera, to patients and their families during shifts, that they felt that all important information was being communicated, that we were, they were updating our electronic service list, which is kind of the tool that we utilize for the structured sign-out, and then satisfaction on a scale of 1 to 10 significantly increased as well. The, the good thing with the SBAR format, and certainly that our residents told us, is that as part of that, that R, that last one is recommendation about how to handle certain situations. And certainly when we were getting feedback about the project, one of the best feedbacks we'd gotten about some of the very difficult patients that we'd had, for example, that have certain types of strokes where they have very narrow arteries, where even just simple changes in position can change their neurologic status greatly. Giving recommendations about how to handle those types of situations, given that they were expected to arise, really helped junior residents, many of whom are in their first year of training and in some of the first few months of their residency, really help them to have confidence to go forward, to know what to do with these patients and how to provide them with the best possible care here at Mayo. The, the study was piloted on all three neurology services that we have at Mayo Clinic, on our general neurology services, which generally cares for patients who come in who have seizures or who have exacerbations of multiple sclerosis or myasthenia, et cetera. It was also piloted on the stroke service where all of our acute, or our acute stroke patients come and also in our neurologic intensive care unit patients go. So those patients who have neurologic problems ranging from general neurology to stroke but need just a little bit higher level of care.